All right, what you're looking at right now is the birthplace of something massive. We're inside a state-of-the-art factory run by Shandong Lukiao Group in China leaders in large-scale infrastructure. And this, this is how a viaduct is born. Everything starts here precision, order, and vision. These giant molds are crafted to exact dimensions, ensuring that every bridge section is consistent, safe, and strong. There's no room for guesswork and engineering at this level. Now look at this, rebar being shaped, bent, and welded into massive cages. These aren't random metal frames, they're the internal skeleton of the bridge. If concrete is the muscle, rebar is definitely the bone. And here's a great visual, those white flexible tubes, think of them as the tendons. They guide electrical conduits, tension cables, and internal support systems. Every piece you see has purpose. Now here's a jaw dropper. The total rebar used for just one segment can stretch up to 16,000 meters. That's over 16 kilometers of steel in just one piece of a viaduct. That tells you how much strength is being packed into every inch. Small cement blocks are then added. You may think they're minor, but they prevent the steel from touching the form directly, keeping the structure sound when concrete is poured. These small steps are what make the big difference. With the rebar cage done, it's lowered into the formwork. Everything is measured, centered, double-checked. Why? Because once concrete is poured, it's permanent. No corrections after that. And just take a look at the environment clean, organized, efficient. This isn't just about building bridges. This is industrial precision. Every worker has a job. Every detail has a deadline. This is where structure meets discipline. Before the first vehicle ever drives across, this is where the journey begins with sweat, steel, and skill. Now we move into one of the most critical moments of the build the concrete pour. But listen, this isn't just about dumping concrete into a mold. This is precision. This is patience. This is where every mistake echoes through the entire structure. Before a single drop touches steel, the mix is tested. That's called a slump test. It checks the flow of the concrete. If it's too thick, it won't settle into every corner. Too thin, and it won't hold under pressure. It's a balanced one that defines everything that comes next. And once the numbers line up, it's go time. Concrete trucks back into position. Workers suit up, the molds are sealed, and the pour begins. But this isn't just dumping buckets of mud into a box. Look closer, it's placement controlled, guided, intentional. This is an engineered flow. The workers are carefully watching how it spreads, how it fills every cavity. Then come the vibrator's tools designed to shake the air out. You see, air bubbles don't belong inside a bridge. They weaken the mix. They create gaps, faults, and cracks just waiting to appear years down the line. So these guys make sure the concrete settles like a glove around every bar of rebar. And now let's talk about the part most people overlook temperature. Concrete is sensitive. If the weather drops below 5 degrees Celsius, the curing slows. And if it freezes too early, that's structural failure before the bridge ever opens. So, what do they do? They wrap it, literally, with blankets, tarps, thermal covers. It's like tucking in a newborn. Warmth equals strength, hydration equals bonding. Everything is protected, monitored, and maintained. And here's the magic number, seven days. That's how long it typically takes for the concrete to gain enough strength to stand on its own. And when that day comes, the mold is removed, not ripped off, but carefully peeled away. And what do we see? Clean lines, sharp corners. No leaks, no bulges, no visible mistakes. That's not coincidence, that's commitment. Because in bridge building, perfection isn't cosmetic, it's life-saving. Every step in this process, every test, every cover, every second of vibration was done for one reason, so that someday people can drive across this structure and never have to think about it. That's the heart of engineering, building things so strong, so sound, so silent.
They disappear into the background of daily life. And that only happens when the work behind the scenes is done with care. So yeah, build like someone's life depends on it because it actually does. And now, after all the cutting, welding, testing, and curing, it's time to move. The finished bridge segments are loaded onto transport trucks massive, reinforced platforms built to carry something that isn't just heavy but valuable. These aren't just slabs of concrete, they're carefully engineered pieces of a much bigger puzzle. The journey from factory to field is a mission on its own. And here, precision doesn't stop just because you're on the road. Every turn, every bump, every slope must be accounted for. Because one wrong shift in balance could damage a segment that took weeks to build. The cargo is strapped down, tightly secured, and constantly monitored. It's escorted, protected not just because of what it costs, but because of what it represents. Hours of work, tons of material, weeks of planning, and the next piece of something permanent. Now we arrive on site and everything changes. The noise of machines gives way to the hum of preparation. This is where industrial engineering meets field execution, the soil beneath the crane. It's soft, muddy, unstable, so they lay down steel plates, a temporary armor to stabilize the base. This isn't just about lifting weight, it's about managing pressure, friction, and gravity. And the crane, it's an absolute beast. With over 71 tons of counterweights stacked behind it, it stands like a titan ready to perform. The arm stretches, hydraulics hiss, and the workers move into position. Communication here is everything one voice, one signal, one move at a time. Because what they're lifting isn't just concrete, it's responsibility. The bridge segment rises, smooth and silent, swinging across the sky like a sculptor's brush stroke. And below, workers with ropes guide the segment like it's weightless. But it's not. It's heavy, deliberate, and calculated. They align it carefully, patiently, and as it lowers into place, it lands flush. No gaps, no jolts, just perfect contact. This is what engineering mastery looks like. A seamless connection between one section and the next. And this moment, it's not marked by applause. There's no music, no crowd, just professionals who nod quietly, satisfied, knowing the work they've done will carry people, goods, lives for decades to come. This is how legacies are built, not in noise, but in effort. In the quiet power of people who don't need recognition to make a difference, what you're watching isn't just the final lift, it's a reminder that real greatness doesn't demand attention. It earns it, one stone, one weld, one flawless move at a time. 